Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show everyone how I did a card using the typical no line coloring technique. It's for a company I'm with called Happy Scrap. It is actually a Polish line of stamps. This is the card that I made here. This is the finished one. And in this photo here, you will see the card and the actual stamp set, which is Perfect Holiday Seahorse. Such a cute stamp set. This is the stencil that I use to add some nice waves to my car since it's going to be a sort of an underwater scene. So first I'm going to tape down my stencil over my paper that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be adding some blue ink, well distress ink from Tim Holtz. This is a nice soft blue color that I'm going to be using. And then I'm going to be adding some deeper blues to the stencil just to kind of add, give it more depth and just to add some color to the actual stencil itself. Well, not the stencil, the actual paper itself so that my underwater scene just looks nice and beautiful. Now let's go ahead and add some stormy sky, which is actually a little bit darker color distress ink. That's just gonna kinda, like I said, give it a little bit more depth. And then I'm actually going to add some chipped sapphire to some certain areas. And as you can see on this stencil, you can see like the top portion has like, I would say the wave caps. You got the nice little curly cue looking things. I'm actually going to add the darker color to those areas there. So it looks like, you know, you're seeing the top of my waves. I'm actually adding that darker color here to the wave tops, as I said here. And you can see how it stands out a lot more from the background wave of the stencil. I don't know why I keep calling it wave. I just simply need to say, you can say the water. It actually, you know, stands out from the water. It looks like, you know, you got your nice little wave tops and then you got your background water all nice and pretty. Now that I'm done, I'm going to be adding some of that darker distress ink to the outsides of my paper here just to kind of make the whole background itself stand out, just to kind of give it some color so that it stands out against the matting that I'll be doing later on. There's a stamp set that I'm going to be using, and what I'm going to do is take some Memento ink and desert sand and stamp it onto some expressive paper. I'm just going to stamp some of the seaweeds. I'm going to stamp um, probably a couple sets of these because I'm not sure exactly how I want to color them. So I just kind of stamp a couple of them because I do a lot of trial and error. And then in the end, decide which one I'm going to actually keep. I think I'm going to play some music as I color. That way I'm not boring everyone with telling you every little step that I'm doing as I'm coloring. And that way I can kind of speed it up a little bit. And then when I get to the seahorses, I'll pause it. And then I'll kind of explain a little bit more what I'm doing there.
This here is actually part of a die. Um, the die actually cut like a scallop cloud. So what I did was I just simply cut it smaller because the slimline car that I'm going to be making, I kind of use this portion of the die to be the actual sand versus, you know, your sand was like wavy. I thought, uh, wouldn't it be something different to use this cloud look and make it look like the sand. So all I'm doing is basically adding some Distress Oxide ink and antique linen and tea dye to kind of give my sand a, well, to give the paper a look of sand. So I'm just gonna be coloring this in here. And then once I'm done, you know, I'm just gonna be piecing it all together to complete my card. Here, I actually had previously colored one of the seahorses already. The Copic pens that I'm going to be using to color in the seahorses YR21, YR24, and YR27. I stamped the initial image onto express it paper using memento ink and desert sand. And now I'm simply just coloring it in. Basically, all you're doing is you're coloring it in the exact same way you would do it had you stamped it in black memento ink but using the desert sand it just once you're done the image look like there's no lines as everyone calls it so basically this is what i'm doing and i'm going to be adding shadows using the dark color copic pens in the different areas that you would have shadows and you're going to as i said you know color it the exact same way you're going to put the shadows the same place you're going to add different colors to the places you want to have highlights it's all the same here, I'm going to add some darker coloring on the um, outer part of his belly. And I'm going to just kind of add the YR24 to parts of his spine. I'm not sure what exactly this would be. Maybe, no, his fin. What am I saying? Spine. Um, and then I'm going to add the YR27 to really darken up this part of his belly here. And I'm just gonna be doing this to, you know, different portions of the image. Just kind of turning my paper, adding the darker colors where I want it to finish the look. Now I'm going to basically finish my card up by deciding where I want to place everything and piecing it all together. Then I'm going to be gluing it and adhering it to the background. Actually, it's a slimline die and it's a scallop slimline die. And I'm going to be gluing the final piece to that to finish off the look and hopefully everybody likes it.
here I'm just going to add some color to the outer edges of the background because what I'm going to be doing of course is gluing the top piece on the front of this slimline background and that would complete the look of the card and finish everything off.